Hi everybody! I love a straight, clear, short message that darts to its objective, that goes straight forward to the heart of things. This has to do with what I call an instinct of synthesis. Einstein gives us the most impressive example of this instinct with his powerful theory of gravitation, general relativity. I got here on this video interview with Dr. Edwitte a comment from DNP 97001, a comment which is beautifully simple but a powerful synthesis of Einstein's framework. I want to read it. General covariance is the principle of equivalence. Everything should be independent of the coordinate system when it's used and it this determines the form of the transformation loss from one coordinate system to another. Everything is non-inertial movement, which is gravitational stuff. We have here a book uh, on uh, a first course in abstract algebra from John B. Freiling. Let us see the role of definition. Uh, many students do not realize the great importance of definitions to mathematics. This importance stands partly from the need for mathematicians to communicate uh, with each other regarding their work. If two people who are trying to communicate on some subject have different ideas as to what is meant by certain technical terms, there can be misunderstanding, friction, and perhaps even bloodshed. To avoid bloodshed, let me define what clearly what is my objective here, guys. <laughs> let me cite five connected guys here who have their names painted, written with the light of stars Baruch Spinoza, Sigmund Freud, Albert Einstein. Charles Darwin and Galileo Galilei. First, I want to show that principally Einstein received an influence from Spinoza uh, by a discovery of, of Freud, which is the unconscious mind. Spinoza from the 1600s was curiously and possibly mistakenly non as a pantheist and a philosopher intoxicated of God. The idea that there can be no external reason whereby nature exists and acts seems to be linked to the structure of a mega-universe. Spinoza derives from that a impressive statement that I called a strong principle of equivalence. The reason why it exists is the same why it acts. As Spinoza equates God and nature, I changed it by the existential quantum. Finally, Spinoza didn't recognize a prophetic revelation. Nonetheless, he helped found in psychology, which in turn uncovers the unconscious mind architecture. Some mind researches indicate also that we can excavate under geometry some beautiful mathematics in the domain of topology, reaching again the unconscious mind. Freud was abandoning his 11-year experience with cocaine and working on the on mythos, Nurses myth, when he dumped into one of the most impressive findings of the 20th century science, the unconscious as a concrete entity. With his astounding Gedanken experiment, a very important psychological phenomenon linked to evolution of the species, Einstein feels his general relativity, a gravitation theory, the most beautiful synthesis ever which conducts us to the very near point where the universe emerges. Einstein denies quantum physics and is 
is amazed with the possibility that a black hole might swallow up his space-time equations. I want to show that this is because the conflicts with the very strong instinctive night time. What is it, friends? It certainly is the affirmation instinct of synthesis. His principle of equivalence is very fundamental, but not fundamental enough. The strong principle of equivalence from Spinoza is a bit higher in the hierarchy of the errors of explanation. Now, some historians of science believe that Einstein, who loved the Spinoza so much he wrote in a poem, was much influenced by the Portuguese Jewish philosopher. But now we know that this influence was mainly and more importantly of the unconscious type. We can say that safely because of the position the principles of equivalence each one derived or occupies in the hierarchy of the errors of explanation. What Darwin has got to do with the strong principle of equivalence, the reason why it acts is the same why it exists. If you think of it, guys, this is at the quantum gravity heart of Darwinian species evolution. I mean, aleatory mutation and natural selection are hypernatural instances of a quantum gravity hyperconnected space. Galileo, last but not least, was the first to define a principle of relative and to find the equivalence of inertial and gravitational masses. Have I forgotten you? It serves a special presentation. Someone has said that if ever the greatest geniuses of science would meet as the musicians of an orchestra, Newton would undoubtedly be the conductor. Straight from a word to the point, my idea is to use uh, groups of symmetry, adhere some axioms of a hyperconnected space to it, and bring in the unconscious mind as a local representation of the singularity wherefrom the universe emerges, in order to build a grand synthesis of quantum physics, general relativity, and species evolution. Okay, now we are really touching God in the sense of how the universe and life works. And I think now we are discussing what is objectively connected with Dr. Ed Wheaton's scientific project. Thank you very much. Have a nice Christmas and a great new year. Bye now.